Today I'm going to show you the amazing power of frequency separation retouching in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a really amazing episode for you guys. This is a retouching episode and we're showing you a special trick. It's called frequency separation. And if you're big in Photoshop, you probably heard about this recently and people are like, oh, frequency separation, show me, show me, show me. It's a really cool technique. Basically the whole idea behind frequency separation, it's a big fancy words, but what it does is it's basically a way of taking the textures that are on an image. And in this case, we're using a face. This is a lot of time this technique's gonna be done for retouching. So it's gonna take your textures and it's gonna put those on one layer. And then it's gonna take like the tone and the shadows and the colors and things like that. And it's gonna put those on a different layer. So when you're retouching, you can just work on the textures or you can just work on the stuff underneath. Now it's really nice because if you need to get rid of like blotchiness or skin redness or like light and dark areas, things like that, that's when you work on the underneath area. If you need to get rid of like little like wrinkles and fine lines, things like that, that's when you work on the texture area. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make this in Photoshop and it's gonna get a little bit complicated, but don't worry, if it's too much for you, we've actually created a free action. It's available on flurn.com. You guys can just go download it, hit the play button, and then you'll be rocking some frequency separation retouching in Photoshop. All right, let's get into our image. So the image we're working on today, I photographed a couple of years ago. This was part of a bird series that I did. And we're just gonna zoom in so you guys can kind of see what we're working with. All right, this is what we're working with. We've got skin texture in this image. So you can see all these little dimples and pores and things like that. And a lot of people, when they think of retouching, they think of, oh, I gotta get rid of all this stuff. Well, that's actually not true. You don't wanna get rid of your skin texture because that's what makes the images interesting and it makes them look a lot more realistic. So what we're gonna do is try to work under that, like on the blotchiness and like the inconsistency with colors and highlights and shadows, things like that. And that's where frequency separation comes into play. So here's what we're doing. This is a really cool technique. Basically what you wanna do is start on your background layer and create a couple different copies of this. So I'm gonna hit Command J twice. All right, we've got this layer we're gonna make invisible and then this layer, we're gonna put a blur on it. So we're gonna, we're basically creating the base layer and then this top layer is gonna have our texture. So this base layer, we're gonna go ahead and put a blur. So I'm gonna go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And here what you wanna do is you wanna give it just enough blur to actually get rid of whatever you want wanting to keep. And in this case, that's like our little bits of skin texture. So like this is way too much of a blur because it's kind of just blurring everything. So what we wanna do is just, just about go to the point where you can't see the skin texture right about there looks pretty good. And then that's where you're gonna wanna stop. So we're gonna hit okay. So there's our blur. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take this layer, we're gonna go ahead and make that visible. And then I need to run a filter on it that basically takes the information what's on this layer and subtracts out the information from the other layer to leave us the difference. All right, so that's where we're gonna create the texture layer. And to do that, we're gonna go to image and then down here to apply image. Okay, so we've got apply image and you guys have seen this used on Flurn before. When I'm like creating like highlights and stuff like that and I wanna blend them into the image, we're using apply image for that. But we're gonna be using it for something a little bit different here. So usually these are the settings that I would suggest if you guys are trying to like blend in a highlight, something like that. But now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change my layer here. We're gonna go to layer zero copy. So this is gonna be this layer that has the blur applied to it, okay? So we're gonna go to layer zero copy. You could name your layers like blur and texture if you'd like to do that. Um, I'm just gonna keep it as just a couple copies. All right, so we've got layer zero copy. Now here are blending, I wanna, I wanna select subtract. All right, so there we can see we wanna se select subtract. And the reason is because we wanna take whatever's on this layer and subtract out whatever's on this layer. So we're left with just the difference, which is again, the texture. Now, the other options here, scale is gonna be two and offset's gonna be 128. These are just mathematical terms, figuring out how much of a difference it's actually going to take. And I didn't figure these out. These are just like someone else figured them out. And <laughs> this is just the numbers that you use. So two and 128, it's gonna be those same numbers every single time. All right, so if you're looking at this, you're gonna think, let's hit okay. You're gonna think this looks a lot like a high pass filter layer. And it basically is, this is pretty much exactly what a high pass filter layer is, 
but instead of having to choose your radius for you, it chooses the radius or chooses the high-pass filter based on the information on the underlying layer because it subtracts that out. So it's a perfect duplicate. Now, if I want to add the texture back, what we do is we change our blending mode. All right, so normal, we're going to change this down to linear light. Okay, so if you did this correctly, what we should have is you should have your background image. Okay, let's just zoom in here so you can see. We should have a blurred copy on top of that, and then we should have this layer, which adds the texture back. Now, if I go ahead and shift click, I'm going to group those two layers. If I make this invisible, we should actually see no change at all. And you're like, wow, how did that happen? Well, it happened because we took this layer and then a normal layer, and then we took the difference of them, and then we blended these back together using a lin linear light blend mode. So I know that was really complicated. And if you guys aren't super Photoshop dorks like I am, there are not a lot of people who are uh, as big of a Photoshop dork as me. But anyway, <laughs> that's probably all way too much. That's why we've created an action that does all this for you. So this was how we create the frequency separation. And now I'm going to show you guys how we actually use frequency separation to retouch an image. And it's actually, it's super, super simple. So again, if this was too complicated, download the action, hit play, and then follow along from right now. So here's how we actually use this to retouch skin. What we're going to do, we're going to start off in the underlying layer. And I'm just going to quickly point out kind of like what we're talking about here when I'm talking about blotchiness and things like that. Um, blotchiness is like, you know, a little bit like areas here, it's like a little bit darker here and it's lighter here and like blending wise and things like that. And we've got little red areas and stuff like that. That's not texture. That's differences in like color and light and dark, things like that. So that's what we're going to be taking care of. So here on our background, this layer right here, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight some of those areas and we're gonna just going to apply a little bit more of a blur to those areas. But the texture is going to remain because the texture is on a different layer. So here on my layer zero copy, or your background copy, whatever it's called, we're going to choose our lasso tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a lasso selection there. I want a nice feathering on my edge, so I'm going to hit Q to bring up a quick mask. Now Q just gives you a brief visual preview of what your actual selection looks like. That doesn't have enough feathering. I want it to be a softer edge. So I'm going to bring my feathering up. Let's try right about 27. We'll make another selection and hit Q, and there we can see it's a little bit better. Let's try 32, and there we go. It's nice and soft at the edge because we are going to be doing a blur, and I want it to blend in. So that's where the feathering comes into play. OK, now you're going to see it's pretty easy. All we have to do is select an area that we want to like blend together. And in this case, it's pretty much going to be most of her face. All right, so we're selecting our area. Hit Q. You can see it's got a nice feathered edge. All right, and then we're going to just add a blur. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and then down here to Gaussian Blur. And now my job is to choose a blur. We're going to go a little bit higher on this. We're going to choose a blur that starts to make all the little like areas in her skin, the blotchiness or whatever, start to disappear. So we can see as I bring this up, those blotchy areas disappear. The texture remains because it's on a different layer, but we're just blurring these areas, and that's what allows the blotchiness to disappear. So we're going to hit OK there. All right, and we're going to keep going with it. So now I'm going to select an area like this. I generally like selecting relatively large areas, but not too large to where you're covering the entire face. Like, like, like areas I generally do together. Like this, I'm going to select basically that entire highlight, run a Gaussian blur, and then see what kind of detail I'd like on there. There we go. Let's select that area. Now I've set up a keyboard shortcut for my Gaussian blur. There we go. So it's really quick for me. I would suggest doing the same thing if you guys do any kind of any kind of action you're going to be running over and over again or any kind of tool you're going to be using, you can set up your own keyboard shortcuts really quickly just by going to Edit and then down to Keyboard Shortcuts. All right, there we go. We're going to select that out as well, give this a little bit of a blur. So you can see I'm basically just selecting areas of her skin that we want to blend together a little bit better. I'm staying away from her eyes and things like that. There we go. All right. Generally, we want to stay away from hair. But because we have texture on a different layer, even if we did include some of the hair in this, it's not a huge deal because the hair, because it's registered basically as like a texture, is going to stay intact as well. All right. There we go. And that looks pretty good. We'll just go ahead and get her arm while we're at it because I feel like it. <laughs> Why not? Now, I'm using a little bit more of a blur than I would probably generally use. Uh, the reason is I would just wanted to show you guys what a difference this actually does make in an image. All right, let's get a couple more areas here. 
just where we're seeing a little bit of the blotchiness. There we go. All right, so with this, you would probably want to use a little bit less of a blur and kind of change the blur each and every time. All right, so now what we've done is we've taken those areas and we've blurred them together, which gives us a lot more of a just a generally nice fluid image. All right, let's look at this before and after. So there's our before and the after. Really, really nice. And again, I kind of overdid it a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure on YouTube that you guys could see what we're doing. Usually you do a, less, a little less of a blur. But the great thing is because this layer contains our texture, right? This layer is the blur layer, and this layer contains the texture. So even though we've gone and we've completely smoothed out the skin, all of the skin texture remains. Down here you can see it. Up here on the forehead you can see it as well. All the skin texture remains. Now let's say there are some other areas that you want to say, like, I want to take care of the texture in this area. I'm going to show you guys how to take care of just the texture because it's on a completely separate layer. So to take care of the texture, what we want to do, now we're going to select our texture layer. And you'll see what it is because it's just a gray layer. And if you turn it off or on, it'll show you exactly that that's the texture layer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the clone stamp tool on this layer. Because if I change this layer back to a normal blending mode, this is what the layer actually looks like. It's just mostly gray with some flecks of light and dark on it. So if I change this back to linear light, what we're going to do is we can edit using the clone stamp tool on this layer. But there's one thing that I want you to make sure you do, and that's go up here and select here current layer. Okay, this is not a time to use current layer or all layer. Sorry, not a time for current and below or all layers. You have to use current layer here because you want to sample other textures from the layer you're on and replace them with these textures. Okay, so I'll show you. Like let this little dimple there, that guy right there, let's just sample from right here and I'm going to paint right over top of it. All right, we're going to do this a couple more times because what we're doing is we're sampling different areas of texture and applying them over top. So again, this is completely different from all the color and the tone and everything like that on this image. So you don't have to worry about selecting, like I could color sample over here and paint over here. You can see it's just copying the texture. I don't have to worry at all about color because this layer only contains texture. So it's a really great way to just go in and clean up a couple textures. There we go, that's a texture. Blank. Done. And not have to worry at all about affecting all your colors or your highlights, your shadows, or anything like that because they're on completely separate layers. And that is the beauty of frequency separation. All right, there we go. Really, really cool image. So there's our before and our after. And as you can see, all the skin detail remains and we have a nice, clean image. And if you think you can, well, maybe let's see. I want a little bit of the un underlying layer because I did say that I overdid this a little bit. Let's just lower our opacity just a little bit of this entire group. And there we can see a little bit of the underlying layer comes through. That's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, really, really cool. So there you go, guys, the cool power of frequency separation retouching here on Flurn.com. If you like this episode, be sure to A, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and B, download that action on Flurn.com. So you guys don't have to go through all the beginning steps. You can just pick up right there and just select some areas, hit blur, and that's retouching for you. Be sure to comment down below if you have any ideas for things you'd like to watch on Flurn, as well as share this with your friends and your family, because learning is fun and sharing is caring. <laughs> That was dumb. Anyway, I'll flirn you guys later. Bye, everyone. Welcome, it's Flurn. Hey, I know Flurn. You're the one who teach the Photoshop. I know you. I see you on TV, on my computer screen. Hello. Whew.